Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Poker Go pre-show. We are once again in the historic Ivy Room here at the Aria. It's Dave Fair alongside Remco Renkema. And I, I, did, I didn't mention this to you yesterday. I'm mad at you, Remco. You didn't tell me that you were going to get skinny before this show. I didn't have a chance to also get skinny. Very rude. Very well, rude. You lost like as, 20 pounds since the World Series of Poker. What's going on with you? <laughs> as compensation, I'm still wearing the same rotation of, of shirts that I was wearing during the World Series of Poker yeah. because I want to get to like a real good weight before investing in new clothing. Smart. Because, yeah, yeah. Because you, know, you never know. You might be like the Oprah of poker where you just kind of go up <laughs> and down. Yeah, you got to be careful. I mean, Christmas is just around the corner. Right? <laughs> yeah, right. The holidays are coming up. All right. Well, obviously, it's an exciting day for us once again as we're live here at the Aria. The Poker Masters is here. And as you see, we've got a, another microphone here. Is that Dominique walking in right there now? There he is. There he is. Come on in, man. Yeah, it's great to have you as well as all of the other top players that are joining us right, for the Poker Masters right here, my my friend. All right. Great to have you. Thank you for joining us. Oh, no, it's all good. So obviously the uh, the Poker Masters is something that we've been talking a lot about. We're all very excited about it. But as somebody that's involved in this tournament, when you first heard about Poker Masters, why did it intrigue you as something that you wanted to be uh, involved with? Uh, I mean, for me, for me, basically, I like to play all these ARIA tournaments anyway. So when I heard there was going to be six of them in a row, I was just like, okay, you know, it's only a 10 hour flight for me. I'm probably not going to miss it because you know, it's like six great tournaments in a row, and there's there's nothing that compares to it. I don't know where I could play that much in buy-ins in like a week's time. So it's pretty it's pretty cool. I just just like playing a lot of poker for a lot of money. Nice. Of course, yeah. the big thing today is the final table of the first event that started yesterday. A fifty thousand dollar buy-in. You guys played a very very long yes uh, day yesterday. You were at the final table. You don't have a ton of chips. And no uh, one does. So <laughs> no one does. That's the thing. Yeah, everyone's short because uh, the final table. We combined at nine players, which basically resulted in everyone folding for ages, which is the nature of nine-handed play. You fold a lot, and then there's a bubble, so you tend to fold even more. So Stefan Sondheimer, as the chip leader yesterday, was in a great position to run everyone over for a while. And uh, that resulted in all of us getting short, but then the short stacks kept doubling, and what then happened is that we were all sort of even. And then it just basically ended up taking, for eight, you know, it ended up taking ages to go from nine to seven. And uh, yeah, that's why today I, we all kind of expect a very, very quick final table. Uh, a lot of action because given how the payout structure is, it's pretty much a, you know, it's very top heavy. I wouldn't exactly call it a winner takes all, but you basically got to go for the first place. Now that the big min cash is out of the way, you want to try and win. The, the first pay jumps are very small. So today what the viewers can expect is a lot of action, not a lot of holding back. And uh, especially these short stacks, the chips are going to. Fly in. Well, and as you mentioned, what the viewers, of course, can enjoy all of this action go down on the final table exclusively on Poker Go. And if you have not subscribed yet, you can get a discount on that annual pass. Just use that promo code MASTERS17. But you have a lot of really big names that have come in. When you sit down, I mean, obviously, you play a lot of poker and it's for a lot of money all of the time. But when you sit down in an event like this, do, does the does the jacket carry weight for you? I mean, does the title of being the first poker master, is that exciting? Or you're like, this is just another day of poker for me? Uh, you know, the um, the jacket is a cool price, and, you know, it's fun to think about that, you know, the jacket in the background, like, when I could, from my seat, I could just lean back and say, ah, that, that looks pretty cool. Yeah. But no, um, the problem is that the jacket gets awarded to the person who wins the most money over six tournaments. So what that means is you can't, like, make any crazy decisions just to, like, gamble for first place, because you just, you're just so unlikely to win anyway, right? You, you play over six tournaments, like... Those decisions might come into play later on on the final table of 100K, but then you're at a final table of 100K with millions of dollars and, you know. So like you, you can't make any, like, incorrect plays because of the jacket. You know, like, it's nice to win it and it's, like, a cool trophy. But it's really all about the money. It's You, you can't change your decisions for the, for the price. It's like the price is not big enough, you know. It just, it, there's too much money at stake, basically. But it, it's a nice concept and I enjoy the idea of it. So talk about the dynamics today. Of course, you said the stacks are shallow. It's going to be a fast-paced final table. Oh, uh, but, I'm, sure. but I'm assuming you know your opponents really well, especially having three guys there from Germany it's as well, just like yourself. It's ridiculous. Uh, St uh, Stefan kept posting pictures. He was like, German home game here, German home <laughs> game. And like, it, it basically moved through the entire, you know, the, through the entire tournament. They're like, the Germans are playing the home game now at the feature table, <laughs> today, final table. Yeah, it's, it's fun. I like playing with those guys. Uh, got a lot of respect for their game, obviously. Uh, I think Stefan you know, is probably the best out of the bunch. And uh, yeah, no, I'm just looking forward to playing with them today. Uh, there's not much, there's not many chips in play, which is kind of a shame because like, it's, it, it makes for less interesting play in a way. But that's just how poker goes. And uh, yeah, it's, it's not going to be easy, that's for sure. There's a lot of other tough players there, not just the Germans, you know, like Schul uh, Nick Schulman's great player. And uh, Mr. Hyman played amazing well as well. You know, so it's, it's tough, you know, it's, it's just very, very tough. 
Talk, talk about this series as a whole, because you played a really long day yesterday. Even if you win today, you are probably going like, to register today's 50K as yeah. well, and that is going to be a trend that's going to continue oh. for, the, for the next eight days. Do you think it's going to be tough it's mentally and physically? It's going to be incredibly tough. Like, even, uh, even today, after such a long day yesterday, I, I was talking to my friends, and they were all saying, oh, I'm so tired, and now I have, you know, I have to wake up at noon, which is pretty early compared to, like, it's like less than eight hours. Yeah, it's going to be tough towards the end, for sure. Um, actually, if I win this, I'm, always, I'm obviously going to play the next one, but I'm actually considering just going to go upstairs, take a nap for like an hour or two, and just calm down and then jump in the next one, because I don't think I, could, I would be able to play right away, and I think that's going to be important. I don't, I don't think I should be playing like the whole 11 days. What if I make another final table, then like the next day I'm going to be basically <laughs> dead, right? So <laughs> you got you to like, uh, preserve your energy, and I think it's nice with the late registration that they allow you to buy into the tournament late if you do wish to do that. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a, a lot of exci it's important, excitement. It's important, actually. You, you, if there was no late registration, this would be a lot more exhausting, and yeah. it would be very hard for players to do. But so this is fine, Sean, sure. who's watching live, said closer to the microphone. So you, All right. you see how like, Renko's like, kissing his microphone? Like All right, okay, I'll come yeah, closer. Yeah, 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 we'll just do All that right, we'll do that, okay. Got it. Um, a, a few quick questions, though, sure. before you leave, because, you know, play for you is starting in seven minutes. Yeah, uh, I don't know if don't start on time, do we? Oh, I mean, it's always a little bit of a delay, I guess. All but right. uh, the live action can be followed with whole cards up on a 30-minute delay. So this guy's going to jump into the future, so to say, while you guys stay with us. <laughs> um, but, but talk to me a little bit more about today's final table. Right. Like, is, there, is there any thing to say from a strategic point of view well, that you've thought about going into this final table? Well, I can tell you that, as I discussed earlier, that the payout structure is, in fact, very top-heavy, which is the complete opposite to what it was nine-handed, where there was a big bubble, so everyone had to play kind of tight. Today, it's the opposite. Combine that with the stacks being as short as they are, you're going to see a lot of reshuffs, a lot of um, flop check raises, not a lot of check calling, like a lot of people playing like closer to win chips rather than survive in the tournament. So it's going to be a lot of action today, and that's what you're going to see. And I don't, if you don't see it, then people might not play the payout structure correctly. And uh, from me, you'll see a lot of action and just try and build a stack. Because as I said, the money is on the first three spots in this one specifically. And you're not, you're not playing to survive at this stage anymore. Mathematically, can you put a number on your chances to win today with the stack sizes that are in play and also the opponents that you have? Uh, Mike McDonald priced me at, I believe... Uh, I think I saw this, like 8 to 1 or something. Does that sound <laughs> right? If you price me at 8 to 1. With 7 left? I, have a <laughs> I don't have very many chips. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's based on the chips he did, it, right? And like, he gave me a slightly higher chance than winning like, on average. So I think that's okay. So I, I would settle for like, slightly higher than what my chips uh, say I'm supposed to win. But not, like, I'm not a favorite to win by any means. All right, well, I think we're going to have to let you go. Okay. It's, about a th it's about a two and a half minute walk from here to the set. I so can make that. So please uh, get that exercise in. All right, I'll run. <laughs> See you guys. <laughs> no, yeah, my pleasure, guys. Yeah, yeah, it's sorry, been so great. A little bit late, but yeah, let's do this. All right, All right guys. Good. Hope you enjoy. Thanks, son. So there you have it. Yeah, headed to the uh, to the final table right now after day one being in the books. Remco, let's talk a little bit about just kind of for people that are joining us. First off, thank you for tuning in. Uh, let's talk a little bit quickly about what Poker Masters is all about. So as he was saying, you know, the jacket is obviously an important part of it, but this all comes down to the money, right? Absolutely. So yesterday, this series of events started with a $50,000 buy-in. That was day one of the tournament that's being played out today. So what you're going to see today on Poker Go is the final table of yesterday's event. They're down to seven players. And like Dominic said, it's going to be a lot of fast-paced action because yesterday it took until about 4 a.m. local time to get down to a final table of seven. Yeah, so when he walked in here, he said early in the morning. For him, it actually is pretty early in the morning. Oh, right? yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And then also, today, another $50,000 tournament starts. So for every single player that got eliminated yesterday, and even the players at the final table, there's a chance to you know, go for redemption once again today, and that's going to continue for the next five days. So, so those hopes and dreams of being the poker master are not dashed necessarily if you came into it and, and you didn't have a great performance yesterday. Yeah, no, that's the beauty of this series. There's, there's a big event every single day, and the structure is created in a way that even the players at the final table will have plenty of time to register for today's event. Uh, I believe late registration closes around 9 p.m. local time. So even if the final table lasts for nine hours, which, which is, is quite unlikely, every single player can still get into today's tournament, and that's going to have the final table tomorrow. So on this pre-show, every single day, you're going to hear a lot about the final tables because that's what we're going to have for five days in a row before getting into the finale, which is a $100,000 tournament that goes on for three straight days. Now, how did things shake out in day number one? Who are the chip leaders? 
we'll actually show you some of the highlights from the action because there was some crazy hands that developed throughout the course of the play yesterday. We're coming right back. This is the Poker Go Free Show live from Aria. Oh my gosh. I'm going to fall. Two queens, right? Yeah. Two kings. Two kings. Two kings. Oh my gosh. Oh, kings, queens. Wow. I was going to fold it anyway. We're just talking about this. That's so sick. And I sure hope that sushi stays down. Be 28.5. You got 35 in there too, though, right? So, 30, 700,000 times. The jacket actually being the trophy, it's important that it not just be something that looks like fast fashion or looks like something that is like, you know, in vogue now, but like if I'm a winner in 2029, I should still say, wow, I may actually take that out of the case one day and actually wear that. It's that important to like create something that's that timeless. It has to be something that when you put it on, it's like, wow, this is really elegant. Like when people think of the best things that winners in sporting events receive, it'd be great for them to mention this jacket. That to me, it's like, there's no better story than that. When you over 3x, you get exploited by some, by some super high roller on the bottom, you know what I mean? Yeah, they, no. call it, they call him Berkey, I don't know why. Mr. Berkey. Gives a smile, Mr. Berkey, on the button. What a boss. <laughs> look, look at it, look at it, Robert. He's got more moves than Mick Jagger, look at this guy. <laughs> Is that with steam, you know what I mean? Like 28,000 with steam? Are you kidding me? You can go serious or what? It's my big line. All to take my 1500. See what you started, Mikey? Put it on me. See, I put on these sunglasses, then put on these glasses, and it goes giddy. The first person who felt sim gets a thousand. Right. 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 That's a free roll, that's not a bet. Welcome back. It's the Poker Go pre-show. It's Dave Fair alongside Remco Rakeman, and we are in the Ivy Room here at the Aria in Las Vegas. It's a historic room. We were talking about it yesterday. As a matter of fact, last night after we finished doing this show in here, they said, clear on out because the big game is coming in. Sure enough, that happened last night. It's happening again today when you bring all of these big names into Las Vegas. Of course, they're vying for that purple jacket that you just saw the making of in our short commercial break there. And, of course, the title of being the very first poker master. There's a lot of money that's associated with that. But also, when it's time to mix it up with cash games, you can expect some of that action, too, going down right here in the Ivy Room. And last night we had a, a pretty big game going, right, Remco? Yeah, definitely. And while, of course, this is a private sort of room, it, it is not a private game because it's in a casino, so anyone can walk in here you know, and put their money down if there's a seat at the table. Uh, but still, you know, discussing the lineup of the game is kind of a thing where you don't really do that. However, what I can say is that some of the players in yesterday's big cash game at this very table that we're sitting at might be participating in the Poker Masters over the next couple of days. And one of those players uh, was actually the last player to register for the event yesterday, Mr. Daniel Cates, better known as Jungle Man, who, of course, was heavily featured on Poker After Dark last week. So uh, it's one of those cool things about this room and about this venue is that it really attracts the biggest names and the players that want to play for the highest stakes. So at any given moment of the day throughout the year, if you make your way to Vegas, you know, please check out this room and have a look and, and you know, try to see what's going on because you're going to see some famous players and you're going to see some very, very high stakes action. And while you're not allowed to walk in here as a spectator, I'm just going to tell you right now, this is a pretty cool place to sit. Yeah, it's not bad to walk in this room and just sort of absorb some of the history that's gone down right here. Now, you mentioned Poker After Dark. Of course, that is something else that you can watch exclusively on Poker Go. If you have not subscribed yet, it's really simple to do. Just go to PokerGo.com and then use that promo code MASTER17 that you see down there at the bottom of the screen. That's going to get you a discount on your annual pass. It's the best couple of month, uh, bucks that you can spend on a given month if you're a poker fan. You get all sorts of great original programming, and it all comes with that simple subscription fee and again poker uh, poker go is the exclusive place to watch the poker masters and master 17 is that promo code to get the discount on your annual pass now remco let's talk about you know poker masters is a concept we touched on briefly right before the break but let's talk about what's happening now that we've been through day number one we have a final table what's going on from here on out for people that are thinking I need to subscribe to Poker Go so I can watch this action. So the first thing I want to mention is that if you're subscribing right now, you get access to every single minute of poker action that we've shown so far on 
Poker Go. Whether it was yesterday or, or last week or four months ago, you can rewatch all that stuff on Poker Go, including a, lar- a lot of original content um, with regards to you know our new show, Major Wager, uh, prop betting with Joey Ingram and, and the likes of Negranu and, and uh, Esfandiari. Uh, but also, you know, we have comedy, Poker Nights with, with Chris Parnell, and there's a lot more action there as well. Just and did the deal with the WPT, so that way there's final tables of the WPT being streamed now exclusively on Poker Go. Absolutely. The Borgata event will be the next one yep. shown on Poker Go. And if you click on the live events tab, you'll see exactly what's coming. And obviously, you know, Pod Limit Omaha is coming to Poker After Dark. So that is going to be a very exciting thing. The lineup is to be announced, but I can already tell you guys that the minimum buy-in is going to be $100,000 and the blinds are going to be $300,000, $600,000. So that's going to be a huge cash game. And When's the last time that we saw a PLO feature like that on television anywhere? Um, I want to say off the top of my head that it was back in 2010 or 2011 when Poker After Dark last showed Pot Limit Omaha at these stakes on TV. And of so course, it's been almost a decade since we've seen it on on a large scale like this. Absolutely, and you know it's going to be recurring and in the mix for Poker After Dark, which is going to be you know on Poker Go continuously in different lineup, dif- different game variations, different stakes. So that's a very very exciting thing. That's all part of Poker Go. But then back to your question about Poker Masters, obviously. That just started yesterday, and you're going to have a lot of live action coming up in the next couple of days, starting today with the final table of the 50K. So yesterday, you got a little bit of that tease action. It was a feature table. They were getting down to the money, and if you watched all throughout the night, you saw them get down to the final table of seven. But today, we'll crown our first champion here at the Poker Masters. One player will walk away with $918,000, and then they will run over to the cashier to get back in line to play today's 50K, because tomorrow, we're going to have another final table. And the day after... Guess what? Another final table. And these are all strung together, right? So it's not like you just, you know, you do well in one day and then that's wiped off the board. I mean, it's you're, you're trying to accumulate as you go. Yeah, so while usually you accumulate points or there's some sort of system in place to determine who is the player of the series or the player of the year, for Poker Masters, they have a different concept, which is very, very exciting. Because the thing is, is that the player who wins the most money during this stretch of tournaments is going to win the Purple Jacket. So it all comes down to the dollars. So if you win 900, 900K today, you know, someone else is going to win 900k tomorrow so you're going to have to so you have to stick through it and then it really makes it a grind right yeah and daniel negrano told me yesterday that he predicts that it's going to take at least a first and a third place in this week to have a chance to win the purple jacket so that means two final tables that means one outright win and one chance you know to get down uh, to that that three-hand play again so that's going to be a very exciting thing to see. And as you can see on the screen right now, all the tables are seven-handed, generating extra action. There's a 30-second shot clock. Yeah, I wanted, I wanted to ask you specifically about the shot clock because you know, we were just talking to Dominic, and he was talking about how you know you don't have a ton of chips to start in these. And if you have a 30-second th- a shot clock, obviously it's going to push the action a little bit more. From a viewer's perspective, it makes it a lot of fun to watch because it's really pushing the pace. Do you think that having the 30-second clock in place is, is something that these players are going to deal well with? Absolutely. I think that these players all love the shot clock just because it prevents one player or two players taking a lot more time than usual, which really slows down the game. But it also gives those players an unfair advantage. In this situation, with a 30-second shot clock, the rules are the same for everyone. Everyone has 30 seconds. There's not one guy taking four minutes and the next guy deciding in 10 seconds. No, everyone is playing on the level playing field and it moves the, moves the action along. And you know, if they have a really big decision, they can throw in one of their time extension chips, of which they get three per day so that's going to be you know the best possible solution to create the most fun action while at the same time also you know making it fun for the players because they don't have to wait around a lot so when when, let's look at some of the action that that transpired yesterday like who who made the final table what do these payouts look like and we'll start here with talking about the number of entries and that was 51 players entered into this yesterday and it creates a large prize pool when you're talking about 50k per person that they're bringing to the table so over two and a half million dollars in the prize pool yesterday alone absolutely so we started yesterday with 33 unique players uh, we ended up with 35 unique players and then a total of 51 entries meaning that there was a lot of re-entering being done by the players um, as registration was closing around 9 p.m there was a lineup of six guys uh, trying to get back into the tournament having just been eliminated in the last couple of hands before the end of the level so that goes to show how eager these guys are to get in there and battle for the big bucks. And as you can see on the screen right now, seventh place today, which is the amount of players that we're down to, is going to get $127,500. But then, as Dominic Nietzsche, Nietzsche referenced at the start of the show, it's all about those top three places. It's 300 k for third, 561 for second, and 918 for first. Just to give some context on these numbers, 
If you play every single event in the Poker Masters this year without re-entering, that's going to cost you $300,000. So if you want that wow. free roll without re-entering, you have to get at least third once in these tournaments. And we all know that pl many, many players re-entered yesterday. So second place is, is probably going to you know, create that free roll for the whole week. And first, of course, is like you know, the monster money. So you had a great question to, to him a moment ago about the dynamic when these players sit down at the table. And it was fascinating to get his take, but also very curious what you think about the dynamic when you've got all of these big names and they're vying for huge amounts of money, but they're also really significant buy-ins at $50,000 a pop. And then you have you know, players that are entering multiple times. How, do, how does that change the dynamic at the table if you've got somebody that just busted out and then they're coming back in maybe a little bit hotter than usual because they, they, they're having to fire off another $50,000 bullet. Yeah, it's so hard to comprehend for us mortals, you right. know, what goes on. <laughs> us humans. Yeah, us humans. humans yeah. What goes on in the minds of these guys? And let me tell you guys watching right now that these people have no emotions when it comes to poker, you know. They might have, you know, love for you know their significant other or for their dog but they don't have a love for the money they're risking they have a love for the money they might end up winning but there's no emotional attachment from these players to the money that they're playing for they're trying to maximize their ev they're trying to make good decisions they're trying to get a good return on their investment but once they re-enter the tournament it starts from scratch again and they're going to be right back into the zone that allows them to play at this high level and that is also the reason why why an event like this doesn't have a thousand players this is the elite of the poker world. There's 34 players yesterday that entered. They also did a bunch of re-entries, but that is the elite of poker that takes a shot at each other to play for all this money. Yeah, and it's really cool. If you, if you haven't had a chance to tune into Poker Go yet, again, perfect opportunity to even do it right now. It's very simple to do. You can just do it using that promo code MASTER17. Go to PokerGo.com. You get that annual subscription and a discount with that code MASTER17. And then once you're subscribed, you get all of this action. But being able to be in that studio that, they're, that they had the action going down in today where the final table is going to be happening, it's just beautifully decorated. It's got the huge Poker Masters graphic behind them. Like, it feels like a big production and something very exciting that they're competing for because you see that poker master's jacket hanging in the background you know we, D dominique said obviously it's all about the money but what are your thoughts on on the title for these players do you think that, that i mean obviously the money is going to be king in this but the, the title for do you think it depends on who wins the jacket as to how important the title is well, the funny thing is, is that once this was announced and I saw the jacket, I was like, well, this is a really, really cool trophy, but I'm not sure like, how much the players will gravitate towards it because we know they can be cynical and we know they you know, can be all about the money in that regard. But every single player that I've spoken to so far thinks it's a really, really awesome trophy and it's so much different from what we're used to in poker, seeing bracelets or rings or, or just regular trophies. And this is just something truly special. So yeah. while they will all say that it's all about the money first and making the correct decisions, whoever's going to win the jacket is going to be very, very proud to own that jacket. And, you know, from talking to Rainer Kempe, former Super High Roller Bowl winner, and Fader Holtz, they said, you know, I'm going to wear this jacket. I'm going to wear it. I'm going to wear it to a poker tournament or, you know, maybe even to, you know, a public event in some capacity. And, you know, the same can be said for guys like Negreanu and, and Polk. So every as, as well as well they should, too. I mean, like poker, th there's obviously a, it has a stigma where some guys will will underdress for the occasion. <laughs> but I mean, you look around like the Ivy Room and this is like a world class casino and a world class room. Everything about this is very classy. I like that that Poker Go and Poker Central has decided, you know what, we're going to give someone like a nice tailor-made custom jacket that to, to go along with the title of Poker Master, it just feels right to me. Yeah, it's, it's sort of like a way of saying, hey, poker players, you know, this is what we aspire you guys to wear. So, you know, put the coat on, man. We're going to we're going to have, you know, the next 40 years of poker masters, you know, and then everybody can wear the jacket all at the same time in year 41. And then every single person will be at the table with a purple jacket on. So that's going to be pretty cool. Now, let's take a look at, at today's final table chip counts to get an idea of how things are going to be stacking up as we go into this final table. That you can watch exclusively on Poker Go again. Subscribe at PokerGo.com. Obviously, we're seeing a discrepancy here. Uh, Stefan and Matt, uh, the almost threefold the chips for Matt, who's our chip leader going in to our final seven. Yeah, M M Matt, Matt Hyman has a, a, like a distinct advantage at the final table, especially because the chips are kind of shallow, which makes it really hard for you to mount a comeback unless you get a quick double up. Uh, Dominic Nietzsche actually said just now that he thinks Stefan Sondheimer is the best player, and he also happens to be in second place right now with 1.2 million chips. So Sondheimer might be the betting favorite just going off of what Nietzsche just said 
about his skill in the tournament. And we all know that the Germans work on their GTO machines and you know they are like robots sometimes when it comes to these mathematical decisions, especially when the stacks get shallower. They've done all the math on all those situations. Uh, then as we go down the list, Nick Schulman, of course, a very, very experienced player, not just in No Limit Hold'em, but also in the mixed games. And then... Um, and, and Nick Schulman has done a nice job of getting like a whole new fan base behind him with Pokerography, which you can watch on Poker Go, and then, of course, all of his fine commentary work that we've heard from Nick recently. Um, I, I have found myself to become a, quite a fan of Nick Schulman, um, and, and watching him play now that I've become a fan of all of his commentary work, I think it just adds that extra oomph to, to seeing him on a final table. It's fun. Yeah, but Nick, if you're watching, you were wearing a plain white T-shirt yesterday. I expect you to step it up, or perhaps you're just you know preparing yourself for this purple jacket in that way. But yeah, as we go further down the chip counts, just to sort of summarize all the other players that are still in the hunt for that first Poker Masters title, uh, we have, of course, Adrian Mateos in fourth place, and he is a very, very dangerous candidate for the title today. He might not have a ton of chips, but he's proven time and time again that he knows what to do in every single No Limit Hold'em format, you know, having the bracelets, having won uh, big titles in Europe as well. And then we have three Germans uh, coming up the rear here. Corey Aldemir, uh, one of the good friends of Fader Holtz, who also uh, made a lot of deep runs at the World Series of Poker, has 660,000. Our guest on the pre-show this morning, uh, Dominic Nietzsche, 635. And then Stefan Schillable, who finished third in the 2017 Super High Roller Bowl, um, coming up the rear with 570. Okay. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, though, we're going to show you some of the action from day number one. And when I say that there were some crazy hands in day number one, that is a dramatic understatement. This is the Poker Go pre-show live from the Ivy Room at the Aria. We'll be right back. When you over 3x, you get exploited by some, by some super high roller on the bottom. You know what I mean? Yeah, no. they, call it, they call him Berkey. I don't know why. Mr. Berkey. Gives a smile, Mr. Berkey, on the button. What a boss. <laughs> <laughs> look at it, look at it, look at it, he's got more moves than Mick Jagger, look at this guy. <laughs> Twenty-eight thousand. Is that with steam, you know what I Like twenty-eight thousand with steam? Are you kidding me? <laughs> you can go serious or what? It's my big blind. All to take my fifteen hundred. See what you started, Mikey. Put on me. See, I put on these sunglasses, then put on these glasses, and it goes giddy. The first person who felt sim gets a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's a free roll, that's not a bad. Welcome back. It's the Poker Go pre-show. We are live in the Ivy Room at the Aria, and we are just a few minutes away from the final table of the very first Poker Masters kicking off here at the Aria. Very exciting times for poker fans around the world, and certainly for these seven players who are sitting down and vying not just for big money, but also, of course, for that title. And there's almost a million dollars up top today. Let's get to know some of these players that they're going to see on the final table. Again, if you haven't subscribed yet, very simple to do. Go to PokerGo.com. You can watch on your computer. You can watch on your phone. You can watch on Apple TV or your Amazon Fire Stick or Roku, any of that stuff. You can watch it everywhere. And again, it, you can take it with you in the palm of your hand too. So if you have to leave the house and, or maybe you're sitting at work right now and you want to watch some poker on your computer, that's cool too. Just use uh, promo code MASTER17 and you're going to get a discount on that annual pass. And again, uh, to, get, to get to know some of these players that are sitting down at the final table today, we have seven players that are vying for that big money. Let's get to know them right now. Absolutely. Let's start at the bottom and work our way up to the chip leader. pre-show from the Aria in Las Vegas and very exciting Remco seven players all vying for big money it is happening this afternoon and like I said bottom of the hour is when it's coming up so we're just about 15 minutes away let's get to know these players right now that are going to be competing for this big money and taking one very important step towards potentially being poker masters absolutely let's go and start from the lowest chip count and build our way up to the chip leader uh, Stefan Schillable he has the shortest stack he comes into this final table with very little chips but he still has a good chance to make make it all the way down to three-handed play and ultimately a chance to win this tournament his biggest accomplishment to date is of course a third place in the 2017 super high roller bowl that was was his biggest accomplishment and also his biggest uh, cash uh, but today He's going to try to add 900K to it, and uh, you know we'll see if he has a chance to do that in uh, at the final table. 
Yeah, the challenges of being the short stack coming into a final table like this that's so loaded with talent, do you have to make moves early and often, or do you just stick with your strategy if you're one of these pros because you know the other guys pretty well? It, it becomes sort of a math battle at this point of the tournament. That when the stacks are shallow, they all know what to do. They all know, you know what the calculations are. And if you can exploit an, a mistake from your opponent, that's going to be a huge difference maker in this tournament, especially when, when one double up makes the difference between being in last or in third place. So, yeah, we're going to see a lot of mathematical play. And as Dominic Nietzsche said at the top of the show, uh, we're going to see a very fast final table. Yeah, and he's actually up next. Let's get to know Dominic a little bit better. 26 years old, born in Germany, and career earnings of almost $7 million for Dominic. He said that he hopped on a plane and flew 10 hours to Las Vegas to participate in this tournament. Yeah, I mean, you know, 10 hours from Europe to get to Vegas to play uh, more than $300,000 worth of events is, of course, an awesome thing if, you, if your name is Dominic Nietzsche. I mean, my stomach starts to turn just thinking about it, but for him, this is just a normal thing. Um, Nietzsche, of course, has been around for a very long time. He's one of the most accomplished players from Europe, uh, winning an LAPT event at age 18 when he won uh, a big tournament there in Latin America. He was the youngest player at the time to win such an event. And then also, he went on to become the youngest ever player to win three World Series of Poker bracelets. So it's a very, very you know good accomplishment for him to do it at this age, meaning he is still very young and he has a very, very long road ahead, like a poker career in that sense, uh, winning many more millions uh, probably in the upcoming years. All right, who we got next? Well, next up is Corey Aldemir. He, of course, became uh, famous for going very deep in the uh, high roller for one drop event at the World Series of Poker. He has over 6.5 million in live tournament earnings, and he is second on the current 2017 Player of the Year ranking. Uh, Bryn Kenny is in first place as of right now. He is also playing the Poker Masters. He's not at the final table. So with a good result today, I believe fourth or better, Aldemir is going to take over the number one position in the POI race. But of course, as Bryn Kenny is also here, we might see some back and forth there on that leaderboard. And you said a very, very live, although he's a little bit of a dog right now, Adrian Mateos, anytime that he has a stack of chips in front of him, very dangerous player. Absolutely. Mateos, almost just like Nietzsche, had his big breakout before the age of 20. Uh, Mateos was 19 when he won the World Series of Poker Europe main event in France, and then he became, you know, the youngest player overtaking Dominic Nietzsche to have three World Series of Boca bracelets. Uh, he won the 2015 uh, EPT Grand Final, which is arguably the most, uh, the, the toughest tournament in Europe uh, throughout the year. And then, you know, this year alone, he has 23 caches in live events for more than $3 million. And Nick Schulman, as I mentioned, he has become very famous for his commentary work, which is just fantastic. He is also, of course, an incredible poker player, 32 years old, hailing from Manhattan, uh, went pro at just the age of 19, and he has over a million ch chips going into this final table. Yeah, Schulman has a very, very good chance today to win. He has a good stack. He can wait and see what the short stacks do, so he might get down to three-handed uh, without doing all that much, considering how short these guys are. Um, you know, but Schulman has uh, just won a big event down in Florida, so he has you know those final table chops uh, sharpened. So uh, it's going to be fun to see how he does. And second in chips is Stefan Sondheimer, and it, we were talking with Dominique earlier. He said that he thinks that Stefan has a real chance to take this whole thing down. Yeah, Nietzsche said that Sondheimer is the best player at the final table. He also happens to have the second biggest stack, and uh, with just and I, I put that in quotation mark, 2.5 million in earnings, he can really add a lot to his total career earnings with a big win today. And last but not least, our chip leader is Matt Hyman. Taking a look here, uh, five time or five five lifetime high roller caches and two WSOP caches for just a little over eighty three thousand uh, dollars. But you see, his his career earnings are significantly less than some of these other players that are involved. But he comes in with the distinct advantage of having the most chips at the final table. Absolutely, and 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 he's also used to playing under that pressure. He plays against these guys a lot, so he knows exactly what to do. You know, and this might be you know one of the biggest wins of his career if he manages to run the table today. All right, let's take a look at some of the action that we saw in day number one because there was some significant action, and we're going to start with a doozy. I mean, D David Williams' commentary on this, I think, says it all, but Kerry Katz sat down, and he flops a full house, and then this is what happened to him. 81,000 with two kings and his lamb already called yeah cats limped for eight thousand lamb raised the limp to 36 and cats jammed for eighty one thousand. yeah lamb can do nothing but call yeah he's forced spot. to call there good shape for carrie will it hold Ooh. 
Four, four, four. Sure looking good. I know, I know a yeah, well, a four now, and it's a wrap. <laughs> oh, man, I've had that happen to me. Definitely the four. No, I didn't think I had a flop king 4-4 four, four <laughs> with two kings and lost. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. oh, he's got a plus draw. Thanks. This could be a clean sweep. Yeah, and the hearts no good, obviously, for Lamb. Cats with fours full of kings. And sitting pretty here. Oh! <laughs> this is unbelievable. You're a sick pup, David Williams. Who even brings up the 4th 4 option as Carrie Katz is eliminated? This is gross. In the sickest like of ways. Can't. I feel like you, that shouldn't count because you just have kings. He didn't even do anything. The board killed. You know what I mean? Like So one outer. No, I mean, he can hit an ace. No, but I mean, that form of getting defeated is one yeah, out to the 4. I mean, like three outs to the ace. But That's so gross. Yeah, you heard David Williams there. Just disgusting. I mean, that is just a brutal, brutal hand. That's the sort of hand, though, that you're missing if you're not yet subscribed to Poker Go. Very simple to do. Uh, right, right actually below us in the description, you can just click on that little link right there. It'll take you directly to Poker Go. You just fill in a couple of uh, little, little spaces, and next thing you know, you're off and running. You can get a discount on your annual pass if you use that promo code MASTERS17. Now, of course, that wasn't the only crazy hand that we saw in day number one. And as you'd expect, uh, some of the bigger names went down, like Phil Hellmuth, exited in 13th place. Let's have a look at that right now. And Helmuth shipping it in for 115, and Shalabal with the two threes and a lot of play behind him. This is best case scenario racing. Yep, no need to call. What, what, five? Oh yeah. boy. One, one, five. Hello, Cowboys. Benba. Okay, with Ben taking this long, I, I'm kind of having a tough time understanding why the delay, unless he intends on flat calling and inviting Matt Hyman into the pot, well, which is exactly what he does. What he's, yeah, yeah, I think he's just considering his options. Ooh, and Hyman in bad shape nice against Ben Sand. Good luck. Ultimately, Hyman takes the pass. Calls, and, not by kings. <laughs> and it's ace queen <laughs> against two kings. Yeah. Some kid, some kid, some kid. Some Lamb kid. is 38. 32 there. years old. No, I'm a full fledged fossil in the poker community. Would you have called me with ace jack? Uh, Suda. <laughs> Suda is calling. Would you have called Suda? So Phil Helmuth's <laughs> tournament life at stake, and his oh, clubs are covered on the 9 7 deuce good. board. Whew. Two outs? Correct. Hey, the wind is at my back, but I don't know if it's at my back that much. Well, it's so much better if Ben had ace jack. <laughs> I wish I had ace jack about right now. I know. It does end up with four clubs on the board, but unfortunately for Helmuth, he ran into the two kings and then the king high flush. And that is all she wrote for him. That is the beauty of the very first Poker Masters. You're going to see all of the big names in one place. And Remco, it's, it's got to sting a little bit more when you bubble and you're playing for that purple jacket in day number one. You can make a final table and you just can't quite get there. Absolutely, yeah. We're going to see uh, Sean Winter who cashed for zero dollars yesterday, but he did make a very deep run in this tournament. And, you know, that's what the Poker Masters is all about. You know, big money, big decisions, and sometimes it doesn't go your way. So, you know, while we're showing you some highlights, you know, you better get ready because the final table is about to start. 12.30 Pacific, 3.30 uh, Eastern time. That is in about four minutes. That's when the action kicks off, and we have a few highlights left. Yep, actually what you are just talking about right there with Sean Winter bubbling on day number one. Let's take a look. It is a this is the classic. This is a weird bubble, isn't it? One of the, I mean, really strange. So Hyman ends up making the call with the two queens and an ace right Let's away. Get stuck under the two. <laughs> As he's been outflopped by the ace king of Sean Winter. 
three. Ooh, four. Wow, a queen oh, on three. the turn. Four queens. Make it quad Again. queens for Matt Hyman. Overkill. Oh, yeah, running queens. Why not? Yeah, you, you got pocket queens, a couple, couple on the turn in the river just to make things dramatic after an ace on the flop. Man, there's some great action in, in uh, of course, Poker Masters day number one, and that's just the first day that we've seen in the book so far. The final table for day number one is about to start, as you just mentioned, at the bottom of the hour. Another one to show you, though. Uh, one face that we will not be seeing at the final table, but was just right there, is Daniel Negreanu. He actually came in eighth place, so he cashed for a little over $100,000. Here's how he went out. Negreanu inherits the tens of Nietzsche now. Moves all in for an extra 10K over the top of Nietzsche's open to King with King 8 to 60. But Aldemir, who is seventh in chips out of these eight, wakes up with two jacks. And Aldemir is going to move all in. Here's the real problem here. I'm out. <laughs> Do you have anything? King 8 suited. Damn it, I was good against him. What do you have? King 8? Suited. Now Di I need a diamonds, ten. though, so. Oh, this is pretty sick, though, Danny. You got Ace, King, and 10. I got Jacks. There's three hands right. Oh, Jacks, Ace, King, and 10. <laughs> How the fuck, about those jets. How the fuck yeah. do I run into shooting? Pretty bad feeling. I'm you got two tens up against two jacks, Great. and the board comes nine, seven, four. Uphill climb to a straight, one that Nick Shulman made against Negranu's two jacks a few hands ago, but with the seven on the turn, that's no longer an option. And Negranu down to just one of two remaining tens in the deck to double up, and he does not Thank connect. You, Good game. Sleep well. We are moments away from the final table of day number one starting. Daniel Negreanu, although he didn't make the final table, style points for that purple jacket that he brought, though, right? Absolutely. Yeah. He's, re he's ready for the jacket, but he's not there yet. Okay, subscribe right now on Poker Go. Master 17 is how you get a discount on your annual pass. Just click the link right below us in that description. Alongside Remco Rankma, my name's Dave Farah. Thank you so much for being with us for another installment. We're back again tomorrow. Throughout every single day when Poker Masters is going on, you'll find us right here leading you up to the action, showing you some great highlights. We appreciate you being with us today for the Poker Go pre-show.